and we're gonna go live on YouTube. So make sure that everything is working. Starting about a minute or so. Make sure everything is working. Cool. All right, so I think everything is working on YouTube and everything seems to be working on Facebook. It's just YouTube and Facebook today. I'm trying to transition just to YouTube to make it easier for me. Uh, but welcome to the Daily Doctor's Kitchen, 6 p.m. every day, Monday to Friday throughout January. I'm going to be teaching you how to cook healthy meals using the 3 to one method, which if you haven't heard by now, is basically three portions of fruit, vegetables, nuts and seeds, two servings per recipe, and all using one pan. It's the simplest method for maintaining your health and well-being, so do uh, check it out. If you want to buy the book, great. If you don't want to buy the book, don't worry about it because I'm just here to inspire you about the 3 to one method. Um, if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, you might know that I'm currently suffering with uh, the infamous virus at the moment. I've got a banging headache. I've got aches all over. Um, I'm not feeling my best uh, at the moment. So apologies in advance. If I feel it, <laughs> if I come, about, uh, come around a bit slow, but uh, I'm, um, yeah, I'm isolating at home. I'm off clinical duties at the moment. I've had a test and uh, hopefully um, I'll be uh, better in about 10 days time or so. Um, but at the moment I'm feeling fine. If you're on YouTube, give us a thumbs up or a wave. Let me know where you're from. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, and if anyone's asking, yeah, I, I, I do work in clinical medicine. So that's most likely where I got it from, but you can get it anywhere, these guys. So. Stay at home. If you're in London, specifically, or across the UK even, you know, stay at home. It's very, very important. Okay, so uh, if you're cooking long, what we're creating today is a winter warming salad. Very, very uh, simple, delicious. I'm using parsnips, ingredient that's in abundance right now. Um, I was going to use Brussels sprouts. If you're using Brussels sprouts, you still can. All I could muster up was this leftover uh, cabbage. Obviously, I couldn't go out to the, this weekend to the supermarket. Um, so I'm isolating, so that's that's what I'm using instead of Brussels sprouts. I've got some peas that I'm just thawing over here. Um, I've got some uh, mixed leaves or rocket leaves we've got at home, tahini, chili, some cinnamon, black pepper, salt. We used tahini last week, so I want to make sure that I'm using recipes where you can use up an ingredient, particularly if you don't really know how to use it in other recipes. I've got some pomegranate molasses, but you don't need to have that. Um, if you, if you don't have that, you could use something like even a balsamic vinegar would be nice, but maybe just blunt it with a tiny bit of sugar, uh, oh, sorry, uh, honey or maple syrup would, would be fine. Some olive oil and uh, uh, again, I couldn't get pumpkin seeds. I've just got mixed seeds here. I'm also experimenting with some new, new software to improve the quality of my YouTube stream. So it should be a lot smoother and it should be less juttering. So let me know how you're finding that as well. Um, yeah, and if you are on YouTube, do send me any questions and I'll try and answer as many as I can. Uh, oh wow, we've got someone from Ontario, Canada. That's amazing. Welcome, welcome to the Doctor's Kitchen. Okay, fine. So again, apologies for I'm not as animated. A lot of people are asking me um, what I'm eating now that I'm suffering with the virus. So uh, in, in short, it's exactly the same. How I tend to eat with perhaps a few more broths and a few more easy to digest food. So made a broth at the weekend, uh, made a soup this morning. Um, today we're going to be having high fiber foods. We've got variety of veg largely vegetables. I'm going to get on with cooking here because there's there's not too much in the way of, uh, of cooking. So get your pan to a, a medium heat. I've scrubbed these parsnips already. All I'm going to do is shave off the tops over here. So this is just, the, these bits we can throw in our composter, uh, but the rest of it we're going to use. Use the skins. This is where you get a fiber, but a concentration of the phytonutrients as well. Um, so we're going to slice down the middle. I don't know if you can see the middle of the bowl so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, we're going to slice uh, along 
the parsnip and we're going to basically create little cubes okay simple simple cutting technique just to get a bit of surface area and a lot of people think you have to like steam or, or um, boil root vegetables you don't you just need to chop it up and you can saute it and if you put the lid on your pan it gently steams in its own uh, water so it's a, it's a very easy technique of not wasting any of those nutrients because if you boil it a lot of the nutrition will go into the water and we don't we don't really want that so all right so we're gonna chop this through here the same thing and if you're chopping away at home and I'm going a bit too fast, you don't worry. There's plenty of time to catch up. This is a very simple recipe, so you're not gonna you're not gonna fall too far behind. Be careful when you're chopping. Don't try and go too fast. I don't want to see anyone coming to any. Well, I'm not going to be in any myself. So <laughs> uh, <clears throat> let me just okay. Right in this goes into the pan. This is going to take about eight eight to 10 minutes or so, turn that up. eight to 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna season this and put a little bit of um, extra virgin olive oil. And sorry to the guys watching on Facebook, but uh, I won't be able to uh, see your comments or your questions. So if you, if you do have comments or questions, just jump on YouTube and then I'll, I'll try and help you out there. All right, season, a little bit of black pepper. Whoop, maybe lost my black pepper pot there. Okay, in that goes, and then lid on. All right, lid on, and that is that is it right there. So you've got lid on, eight to ten minutes. The parsnips will caramelize. Just give the, the pan a bit of a shake um, when you're uh, um, uh, just like uh, every couple of minutes or so, just to make sure you change the surface area so the heat penetrates the different levels of the parsnips, um, and we can get on chopping our Brussels sprouts. And doing our um, our dressing as well. Uh, let's see if we've got any questions here. For lots of people join, you tell us something embarrassing. How do you measure a piece of ginger? It's usually something like five centimeters, but how's that measured? That's a really, really good question. So um, it's a very rough measurement. If I've got a piece of ginger here, so a, t a piece of ginger tends to be like a thumb. And when you say five centimeter piece, you want five centimeters uh, the length according to your thumb. So five centimeters would be probably a bit of like a, a big chunk about about this much. It's not an embarrassing question. I'm really glad you asked that because I use centimeters a lot. So think about it in terms of your thumb and the length of the thumb. It's a very rough measurement. The other uh, measurement would be um, grams. So five centimeters is probably about 25 grams. Um, so you just half it and put uh, a number uh, and um, move the decimal one, one across. But not, not an embarrassing question. I'm glad you asked that. Another thing about um, ginger is uh, I try not to peel the ginger. It's very easy to peel the ginger with the back of a spoon, but if you wash it properly, particularly if you use an organic ginger, you don't need to um, you don't need to throw that away. This woody bit of the uh, of the um, well, I'm using a uh, savoy cabbage. Most of you guys are using Brussels sprouts if you're cooking long. Um, I, you can use that uh, in, in things like stocks and stuff, but I'm not using it today because it, we're not giving it as, as much cooking time. So that will be used another time. And then I'm just going to finely slice. So if you're using Brussels sprouts, you want to finely slice it such that it becomes like literally like little discs. You want to go as fine as you can. If you've got mandolin, brilliant. But you want to finely chop because we're only going to cook it for about three or four minutes. Because if you overcook Brussels sprouts, oh, they are terrible, really, really bad. So make sure you don't overcook it. I'll have a look at another question on YouTube as well uh, in a second. I just want to quickly do this. Okay, once you've done all this, make sure you've got some hot water. So I'm just going to put my um, my uh, kettle on boil. And this is so easy. I'm doing it even though. I feel terrible today. <laughs> I mean, I'm not obviously not as bad as some people that I've seen in the hospital, but you know, everything considered, it's not. Yeah, it's not not a great way to feel. Uh, let's see. So to um, no problem. Thank you. Oh, someone from Netherlands. Hey, uh, Patricia. Uh, that's lovely. Oh wow, somebody's watching from Tobago. Penny, I am so jealous that you're in the Caribbean. 
Amazing. No problem about the ginger answer. What what makes uh, what food makes you feel good during the down days? Get all soon. Uh, uh, Krupali. Um, thanks for the question. So it's a really really interesting topic. It's something we're going to be talking about a lot on our podcast at the moment. It's all about brain health and mental health. We did a brilliant podcast with Dr. Uma Nadu. She's a psychiatrist and a professional chef. We talked about good mood foods. We talked about turmeric, high fiber, the gut brain axis, um, how uh, looking after your gut looks after your mental health. We talked about inflammation balance as well. All these kind of foods, variety, got peas here, we've got um, Brussels sprouts, parsley, these are high fiber foods. These are gonna look after your gut and it's gonna be fantastic for protecting mental health as well as uh, potentially even in treatment mode. That there's um, some really interesting research looking at how dietary interventions can be used alongside pharmaceutical um, interventions as well. It's a burgeoning science around nutritional psychiatry, super interesting. But honestly, if you do have issues, the first thing you should be doing is speaking to your doctor uh, or, or any trusted um, friend because it's it's something that you, we, we know you can't just use diet alone for, even though it's a very important part of the uh, the issue. So I've got a little bit of caramelization. I'm just moving the parsnips around so they all get a little bit of um, caramelization. I'm going to do the um, the dressing, unless anyone else has got a question on. Uh, you got a veg box today, and it came with cabbage and turnip. I don't really know what to do with them, but could you substitute Brussels sprouts with cabbage and recipe? Yes, yeah. So um, this cabbage you could use, uh, obviously, in this recipe like I am at the moment. And the turnip as well you could use instead of the parsnip. So you can actually use those ingredients that you've got in this recipe. Uh, so if you're interested in doing this recipe, then, then definitely use it. Just make sure with the turnips, you, you chop them small into small cubes like I did with the parsnips. Get that color on them, get the uh, olive oil, and then move it around the pan. Um, really, really good uh, to do that. Okay, so I've got my, uh, my um, hot water here. I'm gonna go in with uh, a couple of tablespoons of the tahini. Um, if you, Cooked along last week, I made uh, another, a tray bake salad, like a warm, crispy salad with chickpeas, and I made um, made the tahini as well. I do love tahini, it's one of those foods that is, uh, it's ground sesame into a paste. They use tahini a lot in Korean cooking, as well as uh, Middle Eastern, and it's uh, one of the highest sources of, um, of calcium. And obviously it's a plant-based protein as well. So it's a good way of getting your protein in if you're largely plant-based like myself. I eat everything, but I largely plants is sort of my diet. Uh, a, a, a tablespoon of uh, olive oil. I'm running out of olive oil. Hopefully I'll get a delivery this week. A <laughs> uh, pinch of salt and uh, a black pepper. Even if you're watching along and you just learn how to do a dressing like this, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I just want people to, to learn how to cook a bit more. The parsnips are smelling delicious as well. That's exactly what we want. And we're going to go in with half a teaspoon of cinnamon, just half a teaspoon. I know it's a great ingredient, but if you go too hard with cinnamon, it kind of overpowers everything, and we don't want that. I'm going to go in with the hot water just to loosen the mixture, and then just move it around with the back of your spoon. You could use, if you have a fancy little whisk, you could use a fancy little whisk if you like, but back of the spoon is, uh, just means less washing up for me. Just move this around. I'm at the bottom end of my tahini, so the paste is actually quite quite firm. Let's see if there's any other questions. Um, how many grams of nuts or seeds count as one portion? Good question. It's different to fruit and veg. It's 30 grams, whereas fruit and veg is 80 grams. Uh, 30 grams of, of like pumpkin seeds or... Um, of peanuts is actually about a handful, it's like a small handful, whereas depending on, this is actually a picture I've got in my in my book, I'm actually going to show you, um, there's a, they're so different when you look at them side by side, so this is an image in the book that shows you how different two portions of each uh, ingredient look like, so you've got rocket right in the middle, whoops, here, that's like a big mound of rocket that's two portion. Whereas the same amount like tomatoes, like tiny bit, this is parsnips, about uh, uh, two small ones or one and a half. Um, and the nuts as well, and the, the beans, they're, they're very small. So 
you know, depending on what you're what you're using, the amount will, will, will be very different. So, okay, so this is what it should look like here. I'm smelling that you've got that beautiful uh, um, crispiness on, on the parsnips. And if you were to push down with a uh, wooden spoon, it should give a little bit. It shouldn't be mushy. It should be crispy and it gives exactly that. Exactly like that. Perfect. Okay, so that's about, how long have we been cooking for? I always like to check. Okay, yeah, so we've been cooking, we've been live for about 15 minutes, but that was probably about eight or nine minutes or so. Okay, so our dressing still needs a little bit of work here, but I'm gonna throw in the cabbage and I'm gonna throw in my mixed nuts. So if you're using pumpkin seeds, brilliant. But you could use things like flaked almonds. Um, you could use uh, sunflower seeds as well. This is just a mixture of seeds. So we've got uh, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds. In that goes. I'm gonna mix this around just so the, uh, the uh, Savoy cabbage has contact with the, um, uh, the base of the pan. So it gets some heat and then it's only gonna take three or four minutes to cook. So lid back on because I want the the, um, the greens to steam with the lid on so it concentrates all that heat, it concentrates that flavour. The parsnips are gonna have caramelised a sl small bit, which is why they're gonna be a little bit um, sort of brown on the outside, and that sweetness is also gonna flavour the uh, the Brussels sprouts as well. For the last minute of cooking, I'm gonna throw oh I forgot the chili in this dressing. I knew I forget something. COVID brain. Okay, and that goes. And then the molasses as well. Okay. All right, and then mix that, mix that through. And so our, our, our dressing is looking incredible, amazing. This is exactly what you want. You want, it, you want it to be like this gorgeous sort of caramel, light brown beige color. It's a, it's a really nice uh, smell as well. Um, good. I'm glad everyone, anyone who's cooking along, let me know. And if you've got any issues as well with it, let me know too. I'm enjoying the software that I'm using today because the framework is a lot cleaner. So, yeah. And sorry for the guys at Facebook at the back there. Hopefully you can see, see something. Okay. Taste. is incredible it's sweet it's got some chili in it just a touch of savory from the salt a little bit more pepper I think that is a really really good dress if there's nothing else that you do try that dressing super simple tahini bit of hot water molasses chili salt pepper cinnamon that is that is a winter warming salad dressing that might know about. it's really really good okay so with this only got a few more minutes on this. Add a minute on that. So I'm going to add the peas as well. In the peas go. I mean, like I said, the one pan cooking method isn't just good from a sort of process point of view and a you know washing up point of view. But when you're not feeling great, like I am not at the moment, um, it's it's so simple, it's so much easier to, to cook like this. And that way you're not like stressing out. I just want to be able to do one thing and then that, and that's it. But all my energy is going into this live. So the salad leaves are here. Uh, again, I couldn't get just the rocket, so I got a mixture of leaves. Whatever leaves you've got at home would be fine. If, you, if you're using baby spinach, I would just chop it slightly. Um, but this is just gonna be our bed here. I'm going to throw the ingredients on top. The peas will literally take one to two minutes total. That's it. And this, I mean, this super simple. Okay, this is what it looks like here. I don't know if you can see that. It's smells delicious. There's all natural flavors in this. There is no 
added flavoring apart from seasoning and pepper that's gone into this pan, the, the, this is going to be helped along with the dressing that's going to go all along it. In fact, I might throw half the dressing in here so it coats everything. This is going to be turned off, my pan's off. A little bit more of the dressing here. So, because I want the dressing to, to coat everything in it. Just be careful not to scratch your, uh, your pan as well when using a metal implement. Okay, and this is going to go on top. So, drizzle of olive oil before you serve, and that is it, guys. This is a winter warming salad. Super simple. So simple I can make it when I'm not feeling 100%. That is a half portion right there. That is it. Your winter warming salad, parsnips, peas, uh, savoy cabbages, the Brussels sprouts, tiny bit of olive oil to finish, and there's no more olive oil, but hey ho. Um, and that is it. This is so easy to make. I really hope you you make something like this or a version of this. Um, do let me know how you found it. What, what else you want me to do on the YouTube channel uh, and the live cooking stream. I'm, I've improved the live stream such that it's not lagging as much because I'm using a different software, but I'm also going to be doing it with a camera so it's going to be easier and then you'll be able to see what's going on in the pan as well. So if you have any suggestions, do let me know. Um, uh, <laughs> somebody's saying that they had COVID, they don't think they can cook in front of people. I know, I know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty tired behind this. Uh, you can have honey or syrup instead of molasses, that's totally fine. Um, uh, what is this? Uh, can you use balsamic vinegar rather than the molasses? You can, yeah, you can, use balsamic, uh, you can use balsamic vinegar, but it will be quite sharp. So I would try and mellow that with a tiny bit of sweetener of your choice, only a tiny bit. You can do it without, but it will just be quite tight. You just need to be aware of that. Um, and from, oh, someone from India, it's 12 a.m., just watching your dish make you very hungry before you go to bed. Sorry, <laughs> don't eat before you go to sleep though, it'll disrupt your sleep pattern. Uh, thanks very much, no, that's great. That, that, thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Uh, I know I haven't been as animated as I usually am. Um, I'm gonna try and continue to do these every day at 6 p.m. on the Doctor's Kitchen uh, YouTube channel. We're gonna upload these videos after I'm done as well, so um, to be able to find them as a resource. Again, throughout January, 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, I'll be here cooking. If you want the recipes in advance, they go out on the newsletter. You can sign up to the newsletter at doctorskitchen.com. And if you're interested in specific topics like eating for mental health, eating for immune health, eating for inflammation, um, even eating for COVID as well, I've done a whole series of podcasts um, that you can find on Apple or wherever you get your podcasts from as well. So. Do check those out. And thanks so much for the guys on Facebook. Sorry I've been ignoring you at the back there, but uh, I do appreciate you guys joining too. All right.